in a small, unassuming town called Greifswald, near Germany's Baltic coast, stands a machine that looks nothing like anything humanity has ever built. A twisted sculpture of steel, copper, and cables, it seems more like something from the far future than from any laboratory on Earth. But this machine, the Wendelstein 7X, is real. It's the largest and most advanced stellarator ever created, and it might be the key to unlocking the same kind of power that lights up the stars. The idea sounds impossible. To create a miniature sun inside a lab, to trap it, control it, and make it burn safely. But that's exactly what scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics have achieved. To understand why this is so extraordinary, we have to look up to the real sun, 93 million miles away. In the heart of that star, the pressure and temperature are so extreme that hydrogen atoms collide and fuse, releasing colossal amounts of energy. In just a second, the sun produces more power than any human civilization has ever used. And in one hour, it sends more energy to Earth than the entire planet consumes in a year. That endless source of clean, sustainable energy has always been humanity's dream. If we could recreate that same process here on Earth, if we could fuse atoms instead of splitting them, we could end the energy crisis forever. No pollution, no radioactive waste, no meltdown risk. But achieving this dream is one of the hardest challenges in science. At its core, nuclear fusion is simple. Two light atomic nuclei combine to form a heavier one, releasing energy. The problem is that the nuclei repel each other because they're both positively charged. To overcome that repulsion, they must be forced together under unimaginable heat and pressure, conditions found naturally only in stars. On Earth, we can't use gravity to create that pressure, so we compensate by using heat, more heat than any other process ever created by humans. To fuse hydrogen, we need to raise its temperature above 100 million degrees Celsius, seven times hotter than the core of the Sun. At that point, hydrogen becomes plasma, a swirling sea of ions and electrons so hot it glows like living fire. But plasma is unstable. It writhes, twists, and tears apart anything it touches. No solid material can contain it. So how do we trap something hotter than a star's heart without letting it escape or cool down? The answer lies in magnetic confinement. The Wendelstein 7X doesn't use walls to hold plasma. Instead, it uses an invisible magnetic field shaped like a twisted ring. This field acts like a perfectly smooth bottle, guiding the plasma in loops, preventing it from touching any surface. To generate it, the machine uses 50 superconducting coils, each shaped through supercomputer simulations to millimeter precision. When activated, they create a field of 2.5 Tesla, about 100,000 times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. Inside, the plasma dances in an endless spiral, glowing electric blue, moving at speeds that defy imagination. Outside, just a meter away, the coils sit in liquid helium, cooled to 270 degrees Celsius, near absolute zero. Within that single meter, the temperature shifts from the hottest place in the solar system to the coldest possible in the universe. It's a temperature difference no other machine has ever sustained. At those freezing temperatures, the coils become superconductors, meaning they can carry electric current with zero resistance forever, without wasting energy. This is what makes the Wendelstein 7X unique. It can confine plasma continuously, not just in short bursts. Earlier reactors, like the tokamak designs used in other countries, could hold plasma for seconds. The Wendelstein 7X has already done it for eight minutes, a record for its kind. To reach that point took decades. Construction of the Wendelstein 7X began in 1994. It took 19 years and over a billion euros to complete. Each component was custom made, its geometry shaped by mathematical equations so complex that no human could solve them without a supercomputer. Engineers spent years assembling the twisted coils, vacuum vessels, and magnetic supports, aligning them with the precision of a surgical instrument. When fully assembled, the machine weighed over 100 tons, supported by a steel frame strong enough to withstand the magnetic forces inside. When the system finally went online, what it created wasn't just plasma, 
It was a glimpse of starlight made by human hands. But fusion isn't new. Humanity first achieved it in the most terrifying way possible, the hydrogen bomb. In 1952, scientists harnessed fusion reactions to release unimaginable destructive energy. The challenge since then has been to tame that same process, to make it peaceful, stable, and useful. Unlike nuclear fission, where heavy atoms are split apart, fusion uses light elements like hydrogen and helium. The difference is more than scientific, it's philosophical. Fission leaves toxic radioactive waste and risks catastrophic meltdowns. Fusion produces almost no waste at all, and what little it does becomes harmless within decades, not millennia. And if something goes wrong, the reaction simply stops. No chain reaction, no explosion. This safety makes fusion the holy grail of energy research. It promises limitless power from abundant materials, hydrogen from water, tritium from lithium, both found all over the planet. A single glass of seawater contains enough hydrogen to produce as much energy as burning hundreds of barrels of oil. But achieving fusion that produces more energy than it consumes, the so-called net gain, is the ultimate challenge. For now, every fusion experiment uses more energy to sustain the plasma than it gets back. But that gap is narrowing. The Wendelstein 7X was never designed to reach net gain. It was built to prove that plasma can be confined stably and safely for long periods. And it succeeded. This success is shaping the future of global energy research. The lessons learned from the Wendelstein 7X will directly influence the ITER project, now under construction in France, funded by 35 countries, including India, the United States, China, and Japan, ITER will be the largest fusion reactor ever built. Its goal, to achieve sustained energy positive fusion by the 2030S. If it works, it will mark the beginning of a new era, the fusion age. Meanwhile, in China, the East Tokamak, sometimes called the Artificial Sun, has heated plasma to over 70 million degrees Celsius and maintained it for 17 minutes. Across the world, other projects are racing forward. Britain's STEP program, the US Spark Reactor, and private ventures exploring smaller, faster paths to fusion. Each of them builds on decades of trial and error, on countless failures that brought humanity one step closer to holding the fire of the stars. What makes the Wendelstein 7X so important isn't just its achievement, it's what it represents. It shows that fusion can be stable, predictable, and safe. It demonstrates that with enough precision, humanity can sculpt the conditions of a star, not with explosions, but with balance and control. And if that can be done on Earth, it can eventually be done anywhere. Imagine fusion engines powering vast starships, allowing humans to travel beyond the solar system. Imagine colonies on Mars or Europa, each running on its own miniature suns, generating clean power without ever depending on Earth. Some even dream of miniaturizing the technology, of building reactors small enough to fit inside a building, a spacecraft, maybe even something handheld, like the arc reactor imagined in science fiction. It sounds impossible, but so did the idea of creating plasma hotter than the sun once. For now, the Wendelstein 7X continues to conduct experiments, refining our understanding of plasma behavior, stability, and magnetic confinement. Each test brings humanity one step closer to a future where energy is infinite, safe, and free from pollution. If that future arrives, it will change everything. Economies, industries, and even the limits of exploration itself. It could lift billions out of poverty, erase energy wars, and give humanity a sustainable foundation for the next thousand years. In a world struggling with climate change, rising demand, and finite resources, this single machine offers a quiet promise. Not a fantasy, not a theory, but proof that humanity is learning how to light its own star. Inside a laboratory in Greifswald, a second sun hums softly, contained, controlled, yet alive. It's not just a machine. It's a symbol of what humanity can do when it stops burning the Earth for fuel and starts imitating the stars instead. The Wendelstein 7X is not the end of the story. 
It's the beginning of a new one. The moment when humankind stopped merely gazing at the heavens and began to build a piece of it right here at home.